It's a simple game. Mr. Body is dead. All you have to do is figure out who the murderer is, where it happened, and how they did it. Everyone is a suspect, but everything you need to know, all the pieces, are right in front of you. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the History of Clue. Thank you to 80stees.com for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below and use code TOYGALAXY to get 30% off your order today. 80stees.com started off as the source for t-shirts inspired by all things pop culture from the 1980s, but there's more to the 80s than just the 80s. They've got shirts inspired by the 70s, the decade that paved the way for the 80s. They've got shirts inspired by the 90s, the decade that carried on the legacy of the 80s. They've got shirts inspired by the 2000s, because the 80s isn't just a decade, it's a state of mind. Whether your interests are laser-focused on one thing, say, movies, there's plenty of choices from Jaws to Shaun of the Dead. If your interests bounce around, they've got shirts from cartoons to video games, superheroes to music and wrestling. From Transformers to Dungeons and Dragons, Gollum to Ron Burgundy, Darkwing Duck to Powerpuff Girls, from Pong to Street Fighter II. Their goal is to have something for everyone that loves retro pop culture. Whether your favorite cartoon is Gem and the Holograms or Robotech, or your favorite movie is The Karate Kid or Sixteen Candles, you'll find something you love. Click the link below and use code TOYGALAXY for 30% off your order today. Again, that's code TOYGALAXY for 30% off your order. Thanks again to 80stees.com. This is the history of Clue, but it's not the history of everything related to Clue. Clue and Cluedo as a franchise have been around for 75 years, reaching into everything from board games to television shows to movies and video games. We're going to focus on the core story behind the game's creation and impact on pop culture. The rest will remain a mystery. Clue is a murder mystery board game for up to six players, first released in 1948. The goal is to use logic to be the first person to solve the murder of Mr. Body by identifying three relevant facts. Who done it, where done it, and what done they used when they done done it. Clue began as a game called Murder, created in England by Anthony E. Pratt in 1943. During World War II, as the Germans leveled the city of London, Pratt was looking for a way to keep calm, carry on, and recapture some of the lost revelry of the pre-war days while simultaneously tapping into the fervor of popular murder mystery literature. All the bombings and the blackouts robbed him of the joy of getting together with his friends on the weekends. He was nostalgic for carefree days of socializing and party games. As he put it, thanks to the war, quote, it all went poof. Overnight, all the fun ended. We were reduced to creeping off to the cinema between air raids to watch thrillers. Anthony and his wife Elva were friends with another couple who had previously sold a game called Buccaneer to a British card and game company called Waddington's. Motivated by their friend's success, the Pratts attempted to develop and sell their own game. Pratt remembered a particular party game called Murder, wherein a murderer is randomly anonymously selected from the group of participants. The lights are turned out, and as people move throughout the darkened room, the murderer discreetly kills someone by tapping them. At which point the victim waits 10 seconds, then dies as flamboyantly as possible. The lights are turned back on, and the living players attempt to guess the identity of the killer from the remaining participants. It's similar to a card game called The King of Hearts Has Five Sons. To play, you narrow the deck down to the face cards of all suits and the rest of the hearts cards. A face card and a heart card are randomly placed face down while the rest of the cards are shuffled together. The rest of the cards are dealt to each player, and through progressive elimination of cards from player to player, the winner is the first person to figure out which face card and heart card were removed from the deck. It is possible that both Murder and The King of Hearts Has Five Sons were inspirations for Pratt, although the precise origin date for both of those games is unknowable. It is also likely that the pop culture fervor over Agatha Christie's prolific portfolio of detective stories motivated Pratt to tap into the genre, one of the most popular authors at the time driving one of the most popular genres, when literary escapism was a survival instinct. Pratt placed his game in a setting familiar to fans of the genre, a Victorian house in the countryside, disconnected from the rest of the population, party guests trapped in a metaphorical bubble compelling them to participate. The game board showed a total of 11 rooms, including the conservatory, a ballroom, and the gun room. A square floor plan with gridded pathways between the rooms and starting points for each of the characters. Of which there were 10. Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum, the Reverend Mr. Green, Nurse White, Miss Grey, Colonel Yellow, Mrs. Silver, Mr. Gold, Mr. Brown, and Dr. Black. Why no Mr. Pink? There's no Mr. Pink because some other character in some other game was called Mr. Pink. Hey, nobody's trading with anybody. This ain't a goddamn fucking city council meeting, you know? All you guys got the goddamn message? So goddamn mad hollering at you guys, I can hardly talk. Nine household objects were included that could be used to commit the terrible act. An axe, a walking stick, a rope, a knife, a fireplace poker, a revolver, a syringe, poison, and a bomb, also known as the Wiley Coyote Starter Kit. 
Pratt applied for a patent in 1944 for the game he called Murder, his application supplemented with illustrations provided by his wife Elva, thanks to the World War. It was a few more years before the patent was approved in 1947. The Pratts demonstrated the game for Norman Watson, an executive at Waddington's. Waddington's purchased Murder and promptly changed the name to something more trademarkable. They settled on Cluedo, suggested by Pratt himself. Cluedo was a portmanteau of the words Clue and Ludo. Clue as a nod to the mystery-solving nature of the game, and Ludo as an homage to another already popular British game called Ludo, which means I play in Latin. In 1949, after two years of delay related to material shortages caused by the World War, Waddington's released Cluedo to the British market. At the same time, Waddington's licensed it to Parker Brothers for release in the United States. Parker Brothers promptly changed the name from Cluedo to Clue, since no one in the U.S. would have understood the word Ludo as either a board game or a Latin verb. And still don't. Gameplay evolved over time, beginning with significant changes between Pratt's patented game Murder and Waddington's published edition of Cluedo, from ten potential suspects down to six, eliminating Dr. Black, Mr. Brown, Mr. Gold, and Miss Gray, Mrs. Silver was changed to Mrs. Peacock, Nurse White was changed to Mrs. White, Colonel Yellow was changed to Colonel Mustard, because how dare you? Despite the fact that the revolver remained as one of the murder weapons, the gun room was removed from the game along with the cellar. The bomb syringe, walking stick, fireplace poker, axe, and poison were also removed. The wrench, lead pipe, and candlestick added in their place, making for six total weapons. Ultimately, it comes down to math. Reducing the number of suspects, rooms, and weapons reduces the cost of production and the number of potential combinations making for faster gameplay, from 792 potential solutions to 324. Secret passages were added that allowed players to move from opposing corners without moving through the hallways. Some doors were removed from rooms, allowing players to prevent other players from leaving rooms that only have one entrance. Sales for Clue and Cluedo started out slow. There was no indication that this was the next Monopoly, which was so popular that Parker Brothers could barely keep up with the orders. At the time, Pratt was content to give up his overseas royalties and cash out to Waddington's for a flat payment of £5,000, which, as of this video, would be equal to about $180,000. And hey, Hey, that was a lot of money then, and it's still a lot of money today. Hard to blame him. That payment and the domestic royalties were more than enough to allow Pratt to quit his job as a patent clerk and go on tour with his cousin Paul Beard, who just happened to be the leader of the BBC Symphony Orchestra. Pratt was a skilled pianist, and the quarterly checks occasionally exceeded the equivalent of one million US dollars. Over time, however, the British patents expired, and so did the royalty payments. Before long, without the additional income, Pratt had no choice but to return to his previous life as a patent clerk, knowing that he had at least had the opportunity to live his dream for a short time. When it first launched in the U.S., Parker Brothers labeled Clue the Great New Detective Game, then quickly pivoted to the Great New Sherlock Holmes Game after a deal was made with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's estate. But Sherlock Holmes was never depicted as being part of the game. In England, however, Waddington's used a guy that kinda looked like Sherlock Holmes on their box art, even though there was no official license in place. Sherlock Holmes was still repping the brand in the U.S. in 1972. A commercial depicted both the great detective and his associate, Dr. Watson, playing the game itself. But in 1979, Inspector Clouseau took over as the most recognizable English crime solver. Back in the U.K., Holmes and Sam Spade both found time to make endorsements. A detective has to be observant, cautious, and cool. When you play Clue, you have to figure out who did it. There are suspects, weapons, and scenes for a crime. Mr. Green did it in the study with a knife. Uh-uh, I got a Clue card. I know. It was Miss Scarlet in the conservatory with a candlestick. Wow! Elementary, my dear Betsy. Clue from Parker Brothers. Clue and Cluedo connected with generation after generation. The outer box, the game board, and the cards representing the room's suspects and weapons were regularly refreshed to keep them relevant to the target age group, a concession to customers' evolving aesthetic preferences that weren't as timeless as the game's macabre narrative. Other changes over time included the name of the building itself, sometimes called Tudor Hall, Arlington Grange, Body Manor, and Body Mansion. Body, named after Mr. Body, the owner of the house where the game takes place and its perpetual victim in the U.S. In the U.K., he's known as Dr. Black, although today he's known as Bowden Body Black Jr. In 1985, Clue broke through the media barrier, crossing over to television, setting the standard for a new type of interactive gameplay experience. Clue VCR mystery game brought the suspects to life with an hour of footage for players to follow the story and pick up clues. Available on VHS and beta, the rules were modified to include fewer weapons in fewer rooms, but more suspects. Appearing for the first time were Madame Rose, Sergeant Grey, Miss Peach, and Monsieur Brunette. 
It sold half a million copies, putting it behind only Beverly Hills Cop, Star Trek III, and Ghostbusters for best-selling video cassette of 1985. With sales like that, a sequel was guaranteed. Clue VCR 2 Murder in Disguise hit shelves in 1987 with the same characters, different rooms, and new murders. Between its launch in 1949 and 1992, the U.S. version of Clue was refreshed roughly every 10 years, 1956, 1960, 72, 86, and 1992. The U.K. version remained roughly unchanged through 1996. That change was precipitated by the acquisition of Waddington's by Hasbro in 1994. See, in 1987, Hasbro bought Tonka, who had purchased General Mills in 1987, who had purchased Parker Brothers in 1968. Purchasing Waddington's meant that the Clue and Cluedo global rights were now unified. As of 2002, Hasbro's product is now consistent across markets, except for any localizations usually related to spelling, title, or occupation changes. Hasbro, till all are one. <laughs> In 2008, Hasbro introduced one of the most significant adjustments to gameplay. Clue Discover the Secrets, also known as Clue Reinvention, changed everything. The board, the characters, the weapons, the rooms. Instead of an old English manor, the murders now happen in a Hollywood mansion. Colonel Mustard became Jack Mustard, a former football player. Mrs. White is now Diane White, ex-child star longing for the spotlight. Professor Plum is Victor Plum, a billionaire video game designer. You get the idea. The gun is now a pistol with a silencer instead of a revolver. The pipe and wrench are gone. In their place, the baseball bat, axe, trophy, dumbbell, and poison, hearkening back to the props Pratt included in the original patent, but also stuff that is more recognizable in the new millennium. Suspects have new abilities unique to the character that can only be used once per game. A player can use their personality card to do something like peek at a card that was only supposed to be shown to another player. Intrigue cards shake things up even more with keepers and clocks. You may be surprised to hear that dedicated fans of the game did not like the changes. Which is a little disingenuous because the original version of the game was still available. As of this video, Hasbro no longer carries the full version of Discover the Secrets. They have continued to refresh the game as well as modify it to fit different licenses like Friends, Scooby-Doo, The Office, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Bridgerton, Dungeons and Dragons, which I don't even know how that would work. Seemingly every possible avenue, every possible adjustment that can be made to the game to focus its gameplay and appeal to a different demographic has been attempted. Clue Junior, Travel Clue, Clue SFX, Clue the Card Game, Clue Elimination, which I assume is just the warehouse shootout from Reservoir Dogs for ages 8 and up. Clue has always been a trailblazing brand. In 1985, Paramount Pictures released a feature film inspired by the game, written by John Landis and Jonathan Lynn, directed by Jonathan Lynn, starring Eileen Brennan, Tim Curry, Madeline Kahn, Christopher Lloyd, Michael McKeon, Martin Mull, Leslie Ann Warren, and Colleen Camp. Producer Greg has assured me that we will cover the film itself at some point in the future. The initial box office was not great, perhaps having to do with the confusion over multiple endings that were shot and randomly released with different prints of the film. Nonetheless, it became a cult favorite and perseveres with a dedicated fan base today. All three alternate endings are now included during airings on television, cable, and streaming, as well as physical media releases. From TV series to animation, musicals, live theater, and comic books, Clue has influenced pop culture for decades, with nostalgia-based intellectual properties being the motivating factor behind Hollywood for the last two, three decades. Surely a new movie is on the way? Universal announced a new Clue film in 2008 with Gore Verbinski attached to direct. That never happened, but in 2016, Hasbro entered a new partnership with 20th Century Fox for a worldwide mystery featuring action-adventure elements that could potentially set up a franchise. Maybe a Hasbro game shared universe with Monopoly, Battleship, and Hungry Hungry Hippos? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> 2 years later in 2018 Fox announced that Ryan Reynolds was going to star in Clue bringing Deadpool writers Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick with him. In 2019 it was reported that Jason Bateman was in talks to star and direct. In 2020 Variety reported that Bateman was off the project and that James Bobbin, creator and writer of Flight to the Concords, was in talks to replace him. We were unable to find news on any further developments as of this video. Clue and Cluedo have sold millions of copies, hundreds of millions in fact. In 1996, when the 150 millionth copy sold, Waddington's attempted to bring Pratt back into the spotlight to celebrate his creation. Having lost track of him as he faded into obscurity after returning to life as a patent clerk, they went so far as to set up a hotline for people to call in with tips as to his whereabouts. He was ultimately located in Bromsgrove Cemetery in Worcestershire, England. He was dead. An undertaker had called into the hotline to let Waddingtons know that Mr. Pratt had died just two years earlier in 1994 at the age of 90, bested by advanced age and the fragility of this organic mass of flesh and bone. The Pratts were survived by their daughter Marsha, who shared that her parents didn't really talk much about the creation of the pop culture milestone, that her mother regretted not being more careful with the money and the rights, that her father was content with the brief period he spent living his dream. 
For 75 years, Clue has been a source of entertainment for all ages, an enduring realization of Pratt's wish to recapture the fun and friendship of his youth, a mystery to be solved in our homes with each other, and the inevitability of murder. Hey, maybe we should do something special with Clue for Halloween this year. So what are you thinking? Like, should we rent a house for this? Do we want to go that far? Already working on it. What you can start on is getting the props together for the game. Don't mess it up. Don't worry about it. I've got this. Hey, this place looks pretty good. It's unusually cheap. It's not that far away. What's the worst that could happen? for a game of Clue, but for real, kind of. The game is simple. Catch the murderer. Who done it, where, and with what? Is this part of the video? Are we like in the video? This is not part of a video. Dan said this was supposed to be a fun thing. What do you want from us? 